Hey guys, continuation of chapter six. This time we're gonna talk about the binomial probability distribution. And let's get started. So determine whether a probability experiment is a binomial experiment. All right, so the binomial probability distribution is a discrete probability distribution that describes the probabilities for experiments in which there are two mutually exclusive or disjoint outcomes. These two outcomes are generally referred to as successful, such as making a free throw or failure, such as missing the free throw. Experiments in which only two outcomes are possible are referred to as binomial experiments. Bi as in bicycle, so two wheels on a bicycle, that's where we get the binomial, exper or binomial experiments, um, and provided that certain criteria are met. So success and failure. So you have like the probability of success, which could there could be a bunch of different outcomes that constitute a success. Um, and the complement is going to be our failure. So remember, complement is everything that does not belong within that subset. And um, another thing here is success could be um, it's not morally what a success is. It's just what a success is for that problem. So a terrible example that we could use or that we could see here is if we're trying to test whether or not parachutes open up for um, skydivers. So the fact that a if we're testing a defective one, if we're testing a defective parachute, our success would be that it doesn't open up during a departure. But in reality, morally, that would be a failure because that would be something terrible that happens, but it's still considered a success in that experiment. Now, criteria for a binomial probability experiment. So an, an experiment is said to be a binomial experiment if the experiment is performed a fixed number of times, each repetition of the experiment is called a trial. Two, the trials are independent. This means that the outcome of one trial will not affect the outcome of another trial. And three, for each trial, there are two mutually exclusive or disjoint outcomes, either success or failure. So there's not like half and half. There's not like, oh, I try to shoot a free throw, but the ball hit the rim and didn't go in. So that's half failure, half success. No, there was clearly a failure because we didn't make that shot. So um, that's where we would kind of fall right there. And lastly, the probability of success is fixed for each trial of the experiment. So going back to this one here, trials are independent. So independent, remember, um, they're dependent and one depends on the likelihood of the previous one. But here, independent is going to be whether or not it changes a probability of happening. So. Um, the probability of, um, so we could kind of think of like me, I'm not a base, a basketball player, but me um, trying to shoot a basketball. So the first time that I throw it, I'm going to be terrible at it. The second time that I throw it, now I know how hard or how, if I should push the ball a little bit more, push the ball a little bit less to make that free throw or to make that shot. So that would not be independent in my book because I'm looking at the likelihood of me shooting the first shot and either missing it or actually making it. And it's gonna change the outcome of me shooting the second one. And now with a professional player, they kind of know what their strength is, how fast or, or how hard or soft they should throw the ball in order to make that free throw. So it'd be a little bit different for them. All right, so let the random variable X be the number of successes in N trials of a binomial experiment. Then X is called a binomial random variable. Notation used in a binomial probability distribution. So there are N independent trials for the experiment. Let P denote the probability of success for each trial so that one minus P is a probability of failure. So remember, you have two different outcomes. It's either a success or a failure. P is denoting success. One minus P is denoting failure because it is a complement of success. Let X denote the number of successes in N independent trials for the experiment. So zero is less than X, which is less than two. I'm not two, less than N. 
<clears throat> determine whether the following probability experiments qualify as a binomial experiment. For those that are binomial experiments, identify the number of trials, probability of success, and probability of failure, and possible values for the random variable x. Uh, let's write this stuff down really quick. So for those that are binomial experiments, identify the number. So we're going to identify whatever n is. So identify n, number of trials, probability of success, p, probability of failure, 1 minus p, and possible values for the random variable x, and what values of x we have. So an experiment in which a basketball player who historically makes 80% of his free throws is asked to shoot the three free asked to shoot three free throws and the number of free throws made is recorded. All right, so here um, let's highlight or underline the important things. So a uh, basketball player who historically makes 80% of his free throws is asked to shoot three free throws and the number of free throws made is recorded. So here we have n. n is the number of free throws that he's gonna make, so that's gonna be three. p, the probability of success. He historically makes 80% of the free throws, so this value is gonna be 80%, which if we turn that into a decimal, we're dividing this number by 100, so it'll be 0 0.80. 1 minus p is going to be 1 minus 0 0.80, and we could plug it into the calculator and get 0 0.2. And now for x, so all the different possible values that we could have for x, he could make none of his free throws, so that would be 0. Um, he could make one of his free throws out of the 3, two of his free throws out of the 3, or he could make all three free throws. So x is going to be those four values. So 0, 1, 2, and 3. Ooh, uh, that was another thing we forgot to check. So um, this is a binomial experiment because the likelihood of one free throw is not going to change the chances of the second free throw or the third free throw or whatever. So it's not going to change the likelihood of those happening because we've already established that he uh, makes 80% of the free throws. So there is clearly a success in a fail, fail. So there are n equals three trials. Trials are independent. There are two possible outcomes. He either makes the free throw or he misses the free throw. For the probability of success that he makes the free throw is 0 0.8. The probability of failure that he misses is 0 0.2. And the probabilities are the same for each trial. Lastly, the random variable x, the number of free throws made with x equaling 0, 1, 2, or 3. Next, so according to a recent poll, 28% of Americans state that chocolate is their favorite flavor of ice cream. Suppose a simple random sample of size 10 is obtained, and the number of Americans who choose chocolate as their favorite ice cream is recorded. So uh, question number one, is this a binomial experiment? So do we have probability of success and failure? And are all of those independent? So here we're looking at 10 different people. So we're asking 10 different people, could it be a success or a failure that they like ice cream or do not like ice cream? So yes, each of these events are independent. So this is a binomial probability experiment. And now we could restart, we could start recording everything. So n, we need p, 1 minus p, and we need our values of x. So n, suppose a simple random sample of size 10. Size 10 is n. Um, going back up, p, our probability of success. So according to a recent poll, 28%. We have 28% which is equal to 0 0.28. We just divide um, the value 28 by 100, and we get 0 0.28. And our probability of failure, which is 1 minus p, is going to be 1 minus 0 0.28, which gives us 0 0.72. And lastly, for x, our value of x is going to be anywhere between, so n is equal to 10. 
So x could be anywhere from 0 to 10. So we have a possibility of 0, 1, 2, all the way up to 8, 9, and 10. So 10 is the highest value because we only, um, we're only taking that simple random sample of size 10. Now let's see if we missed anything. So this is a binomial experiment because one, there are 10 trials. The trials are independent. There are two possible outcomes, either finding Americans who choose chocolate as their favorite ice cream or people that um, choose a different flavor as their favorite ice cream. So probability of success would be chocolate. Probability of failure would be anything other than chocolate. For the probability of success is 0 0.28 and the probability of failure uh, 0 0.72. And the random variable X is the number of people who choose chocolate as their favorite ice cream. So it could either be zero, one, two, all the way up to 10. Part C, the probability experiment in which three cards are drawn from a deck without replacement and the number of aces is recorded. So probability, all right, let's kind of look at this. So probability of three cards. So, so far we have N is equal to three drawn from the deck without replacement and the number of aces is recorded. Um, let's jump to, to X. So X could either be zero, one, two, or three. So three random cards being selected. And now we're gonna look at the probability of success and the probability of failure. All right, probability of success, if we have our entire suit, and this is our um, diamonds. This is our hearts. This could be our spades. And this could be clubs. So we have our four different suits. For each of them, we have A here, A, A, and A. And then the next um, row would be ones, then twos. And then I'm just going to put dot, dot, dot for the rest of them. So the rest of the suite. So now let's look at the probabilities. So the probability of the experiment draw without replacement. So this is what we're looking at without replacement. So for the first card drawn, we have a one out of 52, actually not one. It'll be four out of 52 cards. And if we select a card, if we select an ace in the first one, then the next one's going to be three out of 52. Um, and depending, it's either going to be three out of 52 or four out of actually 51 because we drew one card. This next one's going to be uh, 51, four out of 51, one of those two, depending on what we do the first time. So we could actually just stop right there. So the probability changes depending on what happens. So if we draw a, an ace here, then we have one of two different possibilities. So this could be the second possibility, or this could be the second possibility. If we continue on with the other ones, there's going to be way more possibilities. So the probability here is not independent. So each event, so events are not independent. So since events are not independent, we cannot consider this a binomial probability experiment. Um, yeah, so these are not going to be if our this these events are not going to be independent no matter how you look at them if you were to replacement so if we would say with replacement instead of without replacement then it would be a probability experiment a binomial probability experiment but right now it's not because we're not replacing them and let's see if we missed anything all right this is not a binomial experiment because the trials are not independent the probability of an ace on the first try on the first trial is going to be four out of fifty-two, which is about zero point zero seven seven, or seven point seven percent. And because we are sampling without replacement, if an ace is selected in the first trial, the probability of an ace in the second trial reduces. 
um, there's just a lot of different possibilities there. So we're not looking at the exact same probability in each of those events. So because of that, we cannot say that it's a binomial probability experiment. Note that the word success does not necessarily imply something positive. Success means that an, out that an outcome has occurred that corresponds with P, the probability of success. And this kind of goes back to our really sad example of like a parachute not working whenever you skydive. Um, compute probabilities of the binomial experiment. So according to the American Red Cross, 7% of people in the US have blood type O negative. A simple random sample of size four is obtained and the number of people with, or the number of people X with blood type O negative is recorded. Construct a probability distribution for the random variable X. So here, so let's write some of this stuff down. So we have N equaling, um, so we have N, we have P, one minus P and X. So here N is equal to, or we start off with the 7% of people. So probability of success is gonna be 7%. And if we divide that number by 100, we end up with 0 0.07. One minus P is gonna be one minus 0 0.07, which would give us 0 0.93. And let's see, simple random sample of size four. So N is equal to four. So X is gonna take on all the values, all the possible values. So we could have zero people who are O negative, one person that's O negative, two people that's O negative, three people that's O negative, or four people that are O negative. And now let's, um, let's kind of do this the way that we would have in the past. So looking at this, Um, let's take a look at how we could do this. So we could have um, the probability of zero, um, how is it? Probability of zero or no O negative. So this is going to equal, all right, let's write some of this stuff down. So we have N is for P is 0 0.07. One minus P is equal to one minus 0 0.07. X is going to be either zero, one, two, three, or four. And now we could clear this out. And let's go ahead and take a look at this. So we have X, our possibilities for X are zero, one, two, three, or four. And now we're gonna look at the probability of each of them. So here we would have the probability. Um, so for this one here, this would be the probability of zero O negative. So zero out of four O negative. of four O negative, or we could say probability of success and failure. So probability of success would be zero because we would have zero successes. So we would have fail failure, 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 and failure, which here it would be the probability of fail times the probability of fail because these are all independent and probability of failure. So now with this, we have the probability of failure being this right here, one minus P. So this is gonna be 0 0.93 times 0 0.93 times 0 0.93 and one more, 0 0.93. And from here, that's all we really have to do. So this is gonna be equal to 0 0.93 raised to the power of one, two, three, four. 
And this one's pretty easy. This last one's gonna be pretty easy as well because where this one was the probability of failure, this last one's going to be the probability of success. So we have probability of success and success and success and success. So what this one's gonna look like, it's gonna be probability of success times probability of success times the probability of success times the probability of success, which here we have the probability of success as 0 0.003, 0 0.07, sorry, 0 0.07, 0 0.07 and the last one 0 0.07 which here this is going to be equal to 0 0.07 raised to the power of four cool well, that's all those possibilities but now for each of these there's some other scenarios that we have to kind of take into account so here for this one we have um, whenever we have one success, we could record that as um, failure, 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 success, failure, failure, success, failure, failure, success, failure, failure, success, failure, 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 failure. So with all of these, we have one, two, three, four different possibilities. So we have to record all four of those. But for all of these, we have probability of failure times probability of failure times the probability of failure times the probability of success. Remember, these are all multiplicative. So this here would be the exact same thing as probability of success, probability of failure, probability of failure, and probability of failure. So these two are the exact same thing. So as long as we record one of these and just multiply it by four, we're able to plug it into this one here. So here, what we're looking at is probability of success is 0 0.07 times the probability of failure, 0 0.93. And we have three copies of that. We have four different scenarios where this is gonna happen. And we could just plug that in right here. So equal to four times 0 0.07 and times 0 0.93. This one's gonna be raised to the power of three. Zero point 0.93. And that's what we have here. So now, um, with this, we actually have a new, so now that we could recognize some sort of pattern, that's what makes this a binomial distribution. So um, here's like a nice way of seeing all of these. So the scenario that we just talked about having one failure and four successes or four fail, three failures and one success, um, it happens here, 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 yep, there we go. It happens in those four different places. And that's where we're able to come up with this number of four. So from here, oh, let me clear this out. So from here, let's kind of just fast forward to the other possibility. We built our binomial experiment, but this right here is the equation that's gonna get us those numbers that we have, right? So here it was really easy because n was only equal to four. So we just had to compute um, four different probabilities and we were able to see all of those probabilities. But for each of those, we're just choosing one place, right? So one place for each of the places that it belongs, right? So probability of zero successes, we're choosing, well, no places there, but if we were to look at one place, this here, you're choosing the one place where you want the success to happen. Whenever we look at two, we're choosing two places for the successes to happen, and so on and so forth. So that's how we're able to choose all of these different possibilities. So instead of doing all of that, we could just plug this equation in and figure it out. 
So let's write it down so that way we could see what's going on. So probability of X is equal to N choose X. We're raising P to the power of X, one minus P to the power of N minus X, which is exactly what we were doing here initially. That's what we did up here. So we had N equaling zero. So whenever we have zero here, this entire part goes to one or becomes one. And then we had probability of success. We had zero successes. Probability of failures, we had the complement. So we had four because we have a total of four over here. And the opposite happened right here. So whenever we plugged four in here, uh, four choose four, we're choosing every single one of the situations. So this one would go to one. Um, we have four successes, zero failures. So we were just looking at the probabilities of success. So a lot of fun math happening here, but mostly all we have to do is plug this equation into these places and it'll help us out with that part. All right, so looking at this, so N equaling two. So here we have the probability of two equal to two, or I'm sorry, not two, four. N is equal to four, we're choosing two probability of our P raised to the power two. And we actually have a value for P. So P is over here 0 0.07 raised to the power two. And we're looking at 0 0.93 raised to the power of N minus X, so four minus two which is two, and we're able to plug these values in. So here, um, this is equal to N, or we could even look at these N choose X. So we have the choose function. So index number versus value. So four choose two. And we're closing those parentheses for the choose part. We're multiplying that by the probability of success raised to the power two. And we could close the parentheses on these. And we're multiplying that value by these right here. So start parentheses. Um, probability of failure raised to the power, let's put parentheses for these values here. We have four minus two or N minus X. Close the parentheses for the exponent and close parentheses for that multiplication and hit enter and we should have that value. And here it's not supposed to be choose. Um, this is a, this is a combination. So we should have put combination, combination and all that stuff. There we go. So this is a probability of those values there. But to make it even easier for us, all we have to do is choose our binomial experiment. This is a binomial experiment, so equal to binomial distribution. And here we're putting all of our different values. So number of success is going to be our probability of success. Number of trials. Oh, I'm sorry. Our success is going to be this. The number of trials is going to be our total number of trials, probability of success P, and cumulative for right now, because we're looking at the exact values, so exactly three here, we're going to put false because we don't want to add any other values to that. And there we go. So that's going to be the probability experiment for each of these. So again, here equals binomial distribution, binom.dist. Number of successes is going to be the number of successes that you wish to attain. Here, trials, we have a total of four trials. Probability of success is going to be P. And cumulative for right now, we're going to put false because we don't want to add anything up. So not cumulative, so false.
hit enter and we got the same thing. Um, in order to keep these correct, so the probability of success is always going to be the same. So probability of success here, you see how it's highlighted right here, probability of success, we're gonna keep it exactly the same, we're gonna freeze that. Number of trials for this whole experiment is going to be the same. So number of trials we could freeze as well. And once we do that, we could grab this and drag it down. And you see that we have the exact same values for each of these. And there you go. So one more time, what we're putting down for these, it's equal to binomial or binome dot experiment. I'm sorry, distribution dot experiment. And the values that we're putting in here are probability of success or the values of success, N, P, and either true or false. And let's clear this. And I know we got ahead of ourselves, but we could at least um, jump into the lesson again. So now looking at these values, so we are gonna kind of use these to guide us on what the question is actually asking. So when we look at the values at least, no less than or greater than or equal to, we're going to use this value right here. So this greater than or equal to value. When we hear the words more than or greater than, these are not showing us equality. So we're just gonna have the greater than value. And you could kind of follow the rest of these for these values right here. But now looking at this here, so according to the CTIA, 72% of all Americans would rather give up chocolate than their cell phones. In a random sample of 10 adults or 10 adult Americans, what is the probability that exactly eight would rather give up their chocolate? So let's look at the values here. So we have our value N, P, and X. Those are the values that we absolutely need in order to plug it into Excel. So looking at these, so what is the probability that exactly eight? So this value right here goes to X. We want exactly eight. Would rather give up chocolate. Um, going back up here, according to CTA, 72%. So P is equal to 72%, which is equal to 0 0.72 as a decimal. So 72% of all adult Americans would rather give up chocolate than their cell phone. A random sample of 10 adults, so that gives us what n is. n is equal to 10. And a random sample of 10 adult Americans, what is the probability that exactly eight would rather give up chocolate? And let's take it over to Excel. So here, zoom in a little bit. Here we have n equaling 10. p is equal to 0 0.72. And X, we want exactly eight. So over here, probability of getting exactly eight, or we could say X equaling eight. This is equal to, we talked about it earlier, we're looking at a binomial experiment. So we're looking at binomial distribution. So binomial distribution, S number of successes, we want eight successes. Number of trials, we have 10. Probability of success, 0 0.72. And lastly, cumulative, false. So remember, cumulative means that we want to add everything together. Um, false is gonna give us just the probability of exactly eight or exactly that value. And there you go. So they probably wanted out four decimal places. We could be a little bit lazy and have Excel do that work for us. So 0 0.2548, and let's see if we missed anything. So here they plugged it into that equation and they ended up getting the same thing, 0 0.2548. So now the interpretation, the probability of getting exactly eight adults out of the 10 who would rather give up chocolate is 0 0.2548. So therefore in a hundred trials of this study, so the study would be then asking exactly 10 people 
or them asking 10 people whether or not they would rather give up their chocolate than their cell phone. And eight out of those 10 people would answer correctly. So out of 100 of those trials, um, that is if they surveyed 10 adult Americans 100 different times, we would expect about 25 trials to result in eight adults. So eight adult Americans who would rather give up chocolate than their cell phones. All right, so now looking at this exact situation, but this time we're looking at, let's erase some of this. So here, fewer than three. So fewer than three. Fewer than three. So fewer than three would rather give up chocolate. So now let's look at all these different possibilities. So we have the values of zero, um, value of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So now with these values here, um, is zero fewer than three? Yes, zero is fewer than three. One fewer than three, yes. Two fewer than three, yes. Three is a value three because 10 is definitely not fewer than three. So that one's not gonna be there. So fewer than three is only gonna constitute these three numbers because three is not fewer than three. Three is more than three. So all of these numbers are not gonna be true. So what we would have to do is one of two things. So we could come over here and let's build a binomial probability distribution and see what these values are. So we're actually gonna get this solution right now. But here we have a value um, X. Over here, we're gonna have the probability of X. So here for X, we have the possibility of zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So what we wanna do here is find each of those possibilities. So let's clear this out just so we can see what we're doing. So equal to binomial distribution. So number of successes, we want zero successes. Number of trials, we want 10. Probability of success, 10. And for right now, cumulative will put false because we wanna find all of these probabilities here. So now these values from here, um, zero is not gonna change. Um, our probability, our trials is not gonna change. Our trials are always gonna be 10 for this experiment. And here the probability is never gonna change. So we're gonna put dollar signs around that as well. Dollar signs around that B as well. Okay, so from here, we grab here, drag this down. Let's go out four decimal places. And let's not make it scientific notation, let's just make it a general value. All right, there we go, much better. Okay, I guess we can't fix it. Okay, so from here, eight is that same value that we were talking about earlier. Pool, these other values are pretty much exactly the same. So E, let's just talk about this really quick. If you understand this part, no big deal. You could fast forward a little bit. But looking at this, we have 2.96. We'll just leave it like that. And we have E minus 0, 0.6. So what this part right here is telling us is that we're going out six decimal places to catch up to whatever number that was. So this is just a way to rewrite the number. So that way it doesn't um, crowd up our judgment with anything. So here we're moving that decimal place six different spots. So instead of it being two, let me write it a little bit over here, 2.96, we're moving it six decimal places to the negative direction. So negative is going to be left. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. And from here, what we're going to do is fill the rest of that in with zeros. 
So we have zero here in the front. We have one, two, three, four, five zeros here leading in front of it. So our actual value, this here is equal to 0 0.00000296. So these two are equivalent. Let's clear this up and let's kind of move back. So that's what this value represents and we could kind of carry it with all of these. So that's why this value right here doesn't have any E to the negative zero six or anything like that. It's just that straight number there. And that's why this here, it's this is called scientific notation. So if you guys want any other videos or you wanna look it up, scientific notation. Just in case my explanation wasn't that like clear, but there we go. So here we have all those different possibilities. What we were looking at is a probability of fewer than three, which we agreed was zero, one, and two. Three and above is not going to be fewer than three. So these three are the ones that would make it up for us. So now probability of x being fewer than three, so less than three. So this is going to be equal to the probability of x being less than or equal to two, because we want that equality. So one thing we could do is add all of these values up. So equal to the sum of one, two, and three, those three values there. Or another thing we could do is finally use that cumulative thing that we were talking about. So here, this is a binomial distribution. Number of successes, we want X to be less than or equal to two. So less than or equal to two. Number of trials, we have 10. Probability of success, 0 0.72. Cumulative, this time because we want all those three added, we're gonna say true. Hit enter and it gives us that exact same value. So this is a probability of less than or equal to six. So again, cumulative, just like when we were talking about cumulative in chapter two, cumulative is looking at wherever you want to stop and everything before it. So if you wanted the probability of all nine of them or nine out of the 10, we're starting from the beginning and stopping there. Um, I believe the next example is going to be greater than, so we'll get an example of greater than right now. But we have all of those. So probability of fewer than three is going to be 0 0.0009. So x equaling zero, one, or two. So probability of less than three is gonna be the probability of zero plus the probability of one plus the probability of two. And now looking at these values here, the probability that in a random sample of 10 adult Americans fewer than three would rather give up chocolate than their cell phone is 0 0.00096. So that is that in a thousand trials of this study, we would expect about one trial to result in fewer than nine adult or three adult Americans who would rather give up their phones than chocolate. And lastly, this one here, well, not lastly, but for this round of examples, we have at least three would rather give up chocolate. So here, what we're looking at is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and 10, at least three. So is zero at least three? No, so that one's not gonna be in the running. One at least three, no. Two at least three, no. So at least three, three is gonna be in that category. And four is gonna be in that category all the way up to 10. So we have all of these to choose from. So if we were to have done it the way that they wanted us to with that, um, probability of x equaling and choose x, probability of x, one minus the probability of n minus x. So we would have to run this 
and add the probability of three, then the probability of four plus the probability of five, all the way up to the probability of 10. But here we could just have Excel do that work for us. Only difference is um, that we're gonna have to do a little bit more work than what we anticipated. So because um, Excel is only gonna catch everything from the beginning. So because Excel, um, we tell it where to stop. So it starts, starts off at like negative infinity and keeps going until we tell it to stop. Um, we're going to have to look at these values here and then get the complement of whatever those values are. So starting with those values, we're going to get the complement of whatever those values are. So here, probability of X being greater than or equal to three, because that's exactly what they were asking. This is going to be equal to one minus the probability of X being less than or equal to two. Again, because Excel isn't going to, well, this is a normal distribution. So Excel is gonna start from negative infinity and go up to where you want it to. So here it's gonna start at zero and go up to whatever you want it to. We can't start at a certain number and go forward from there. So let's take a look at exactly what I mean here. So here, probability of x being greater than or equal to 3, greater than or equal to 3, this is 1 minus the probability of x being less than or equal to 2. And first, we have to find the probability of x being less than or equal to two. So here, this is equal to binomial distribution. Let's figure this stuff out. So binomial distribution, number of successes, we want two. Number of trials, we have 10. Probability of success is P. Cumulative, true, because we want them to be added up. We want Excel to do that work for us. And now we have this here. So one minus the probability of X being less than or equal to two. So equal to one minus this value here. This is a probability of X being greater than or equal to three. And since we already have the entire distribution here for us, let's just see if it's true. So equal to the sum of these values, so from three and up. And there we go. Those two numbers are exactly the same. It's exactly what we needed here. And that's what we have there. So probability of x being greater than or equal to three is 0 0.999. Could just say that. So again, the values are going to be from three to 10. So we're looking at all those different possibilities. So we either have the probability of X being greater than or equal to three or the complement of X being less than three. So less than three, remember, is less than or equal to two, which is what we got here. And now the interpretation. So the probability that in a random sample of 10 adults, at least three would rather give up chocolate than their cell phones, that probability is 0.9990. So we would say that in a thousand trials of this study, we would expect about 999 of the trials to result in at least three saying that they would rather give up chocolate. And lastly, part D, the number of adult Americans who would rather give up chocolate is between five and seven. So now let's take a look at these values. So the probability we're looking at the probability of five less than or equal to x less than or equal to seven. And let's just make sure we read that correctly. The number of adult Americans who would rather give up chocolate is between five and seven inclusive. So inclusive means that we would have that equality there too. All right, let's write everything down. So we have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. 
All right, so the values that we want are these right here, five through seven. So five through seven is what we want. So what we're gonna have to do is find these probabilities. So all of this, and so the probability of all of these here minus the probabilities here. So we could take these out. So now the way that we could write it is we want the probability of five less than or equal to x less than or equal to seven. So this is going to be the probability of x being less than or equal to seven minus the probability of x being less than or equal to four. So in order to find that probability, we're going to have to find those two probabilities. So let's see what we have here. So we could delete all of these. And here we're looking at the probability of five less than or equal to x less than or equal to seven. And in order to find that, we're going to need the probability of x being less than or equal to seven and the probability of x being less than or equal to five. Much better. Okay. And let's clear this out. So now uh, probability of x being less than or equal to seven, this is a binomial distribution. Binomial distribution number of successes is seven. Number of trials is still 10. Probability of success, 0.72. Cumulative, true, because we want all of these added up together. And here, this is gonna be equal to binomial distribution. Number of successes, in this case, we want five. Number of trials, we have 10. Probability of success, 0 0.72. Cumulative, true, because we want all of those to be added up. And now from here, we would say the probability of five less than or equal to x, less than or equal to seven. This is equal to this value minus this one. And there we go. So we have these. Again, this is a probability of five, six, and seven. So let's see if it ends up being true. So equal to the sum. Nope. So sum of probability of five to seven, sum of five up to seven. And just a little bit off. Ooh, because it should have been four. So we wanna subtract four of them, not all five. So four would be four here. Oh, and there we go, much better. So there we go, those are those possibilities. So again, we're subtracting the five or the four that we didn't need. So zero up to four, which leaves five in there. All right, there we go. Let's see if we missed anything. So the root word inclusive means include. So we're including that five and the seven. So we're looking at those three probabilities, but we could have done it this way over here. And now we can look at this. So the probability that the number of adult Americans who would rather give up chocolate is between five and seven inclusively is 0 0.5278 or 79. In 100 trials of this study, we would expect about 53 trials to result in five to seven adults who would rather give up chocolate. All right, looking at this one here. So this time we're gonna be, or this time they're using the table, we could still continue to use Excel. So according to the Gallup organization, 65% of adult Americans are in favor of the death penalty for individuals convicted of murder. So in a random sample of 15 adult Americans, what is the probability that exactly 10 favor the death penalty? All right, so here, let's grab everything that we need. 
So 65%, so P equal to 65% of adult Americans are in favor of the death, to, death penalty. Random sample of N equaling 15. Adult Americans, what is the probability that exactly 10, there we go, exactly 10 favor the death penalty. So let's get another page. So here we have P probability of success is 0 0.65 or 65%. N is equal to 15. And X, we're looking for the probability of X equaling 10, exactly 10. So here, this one's easy. So this is equal to binomial experiment or binomial distribution. And number of successes, we want exactly 10. 10, number of trials, we have 15. Probability of success, 0 0.65. Cumulative, true. And there we go. So 0 0.6481. So probability is 6481. There it is here. So we have n equaling 15, p equaling 0 0.65, x is equal to 10. So here they use the table and they saw that the probability of 10, 0 Okay, I see where the hat where the mistake happened. So we put true, which is adding all of these values together, but we didn't really want true. What we wanted was false to get exactly 10. So true added up zero, the probability of zero plus the probability of one, all the way up to the probability of 10, but we only wanted the probability of 10. So that's where we get the 0 0.2123. 0 0.2123 is what the table on the back said. And um, you can look at the table. So they looked at P equaling this right here, 10 equaling this here. So the downfall of using the table is that you could only get these values that they give you. So um, when P is equal to 0, 1%, 5%, 10, 15, 20, only these percentages right here. So you don't really get a great estimation in, in these tables. All right, so next is no more than six favor the death penalty. So no more than six. Then six. This here is um, X being less than or equal to six. So no more than six because zero is no more than six. Seven is going to be more than six, so therefore this is going to be the values that we're looking at. So x being less than or equal to six, so now the probability of x being less than or equal to less than or equal to six. Here, these are going to be cumulative. And because we're going from 0 up to 6, we don't have to do any crazy math here. So binomial distribution, number of successes, we want 6. Number of trials, we have 15. Probability of success, 0 0.65. Cumulative, this time we do want it to be true. We don't want it to be false. True, because it's going to add everything from 6 and below. And there we go, so 0 0.0219, 0 0.0219. And here the phrase no more than six, less than or equal to. So to compute, we're looking at x less than or equal to six. So this time we're using cumulative. So we're looking at that to be 0 0.0422, 0 0.0422, perfect. This is how they interpreted that on the table. And looking at this, we have our last or possibly last, is it last? Maybe 
All right, according to the Gallup organization, 65% of adult Americans are in favor of the death penalty for individuals convicted of murder. In a random sample of 15 adult Americans, what is the probability that exactly 10 favor the death penalty? No more than six. Oh, and we already did these. So here they actually computed it on, it looks like, oh, stat crunch. So you guys could do that, but we're primarily using Excel. We have these right here. And lastly, the interpretation of exactly six, same interpretation that we had earlier. Over here, they used um, the calculators, so the TI-84. And close. All right, the mean or um, expected value and the standard deviation of a binomial random variable. Um, for the mean, we're just looking at n times p, so the sample size times the probability of success. For the standard de deviation, we're looking at the square root of the sample size, probability of success, and the probability of failure. So 1 minus p is um, probability of failure. So here, according to the CTIA, 72% of adult Americans would rather give up chocolate than their cell phone. So in a simple random sample of 300 households determine the mean and the standard deviation number who would rather give up chocolate than their cell phones. So here we have N is equal to 300, P is equal to 72%, and looks like that's it. So now remember the formulas that we were looking at. We have the mean equal to n times p. And the standard deviation is equal to the square root of n times p times 1 minus p. And let's take this over to Excel and see what we end up getting. So now we have the mean and the standard deviation. And let's zoom in a little bit so we could see what's going on. So we have these values here. Let's figure out what n is. So n is 300. P is 72% or 0 0.72. And 1 minus P is equal to 1 minus P. There we go. And we said that the mean is equal to N times P. Perfect. Standard deviation is equal to the square root SQRT of N times P times one minus P and close parentheses. Perfect. So we have the mean and the standard deviations, the standard deviation 7.77, 777. Okay. There we go. There's the mean, there's the standard deviation and the interpretation. So we expect that in a random sample of 300 adult Americans, 216 would rather give up chocolate than their cell phones. And that spread is has a standard deviation of 7.8. Next, we're gonna graph binomial probability distributions. So graph the binomial probability distributions with n equaling 10, p equaling 0 0.2. So again, n is equal to 10, p is equal to 0 0.2. All right, so let's build this on Excel. All right, looks good. So here we have x, the probability of x, and notice here, x has, n is equal to 10, so x could take on those 10 different values. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So n is equal to 10. 
And here, just so we have this written down in a nice place, we have N is 10, P is 0 0.2, and that's about it. That's all we need here. All right, so now let's take a look at plugging everything in. So now the probability, each of these is a binomial experiment. So binomial distribution, and we have the number of successes. For each of these, it's going to be whatever x is. The number of trials is going to be 10, so that's going to freeze. Probability is going to be the same for each of those, so that's going to freeze. Cumulative, do we want to add all of these together, or do we not want to add all of these together? So because each of these is looking at exactly five, exactly seven, exactly 10, we're going to put false because we don't want to add them all up. There we go. And we said that we needed to freeze trials because the trials are not going to change. And we need to freeze probability because the probability is not going to change. False isn't going to change either whenever we drag it down. So from here, we grab this corner, click, and drag down. And there we go. Looks like a couple of these are in scientific notation, but no big deal because we're going to graph the binomial experiment. So I feel like we're experts at this now. So all we have to do is highlight what we want graphed. We could bring these two up here too. Works sometimes, doesn't work other times. But from here, what we're gonna do is graph with a bar graph. And there we go. So ooh, why does it have it like that? Clear this really quick because it was graphing it a little weird. So again, insert. Um, let's try. Let's try this one here. So just to make sure to has a probability, has the highest probability with 0 0.30, 0 0.30. And there we go. So I matched each of the X values or the values in the first column with the height of the second column. So the height here, and there we go. So notice that this does look like a normal distribution. And what I mean by a normal distribution, it looks roughly bell-shaped. My drawings could be a little bit better, but it looks roughly bell-shaped based on the distribution here. I'm guessing it would have something that looks like that over here on this side too. So roughly bell-shaped, which would be a normal distribution or what we call roughly normal. And that's exactly what they have over here. And notice that even though we don't see it here, there's still those values of like 0 0.07 is right here, but the height is really, really small, so you could barely, barely see it. So notice here, here, and here, all of those do have some sort of value really, really close to zero, which makes sense because they had to put it in scientific notation for it to just, um, so we could just see these values here. So. There we go. That's how we could graph it. And graph the binomial probability distribution with n equaling 10, p equaling 0 0.5. So let's do the same thing over here. So n equaling 10, p equaling 0 0.5, and see how it changes. So it changed all of these, which forced it, us to change all of this over here. So notice that this is still roughly symmetric. Um, actually, it's very symmetric. So it's more symmetric than the previous one. The previous one, actually, let's try this. Let's go back to 0 0.2. Let's draw this one. So this was P equal to 0 0.02. The next one was 0 0.05. So 
So let's make the next one blue. P equal to 0 0.5. And I'm going to guess that they have another one of 0 0.8. Perfect. OK, next one is going to be 0 0.8. And this one almost looks mirror image to 0 0.2. And let's see, I want to say that they kind of stop with that one. All right, yeah. So if you want to go ahead and guess what happens here, why these look symmetri symmetrical, this one's P is equal to 0 0.8. So why these kind of look like mirror images of each other, it's crossing right here exactly in the middle of where this one, which isn't a co coincidence, it, there has to be something along these lines that happens with these. So notice that it kind of just judging while well, I kind of drew it a little ugly, but you could see that these are roughly exactly the same, just flipped around like it's a mirror image of each other. And that's because it's the complement of each other. So we have 0 0.2 here. 0 0.8. So whenever we have a number less than five, so whenever p is less than five, we're going to have data that's skewed right because we have more data to the right side than we do the left side. Whenever our value is greater than 0 0.5, it's going to be skewed left because we have more data to the left side than we do the right side. And notice here, so if you actually flip these back, this is 0 0.02. Notice that this value is going to end up going way down to the bottom. So 1.02, negative 7. 1.02 at negative 7. So these two are exactly the opposite. And it's because the it's because one of them is a complement of the other. So I thought that was kind of fun. Maybe you guys do, maybe you guys don't. No big deal if you don't. All right, so now looking at these here, so we have seen the role that P plays in the shape of the binomial distribution, but what role does N play? So N is going to have its own kind of cool stuff that happens here too. So here we played around with whatever P is. N we're going to look at, so we have seen, so the figure show the graph of three binomial probability distributions drawn in stack crunch, N equaling five, P equaling 0 0.2. Here, let's try it. So 0 0.2. So here we are going to, okay. So they did 0.2 here. So first we're looking at five. So we have five and it's drawn out a little like this. And then we have n equaling 30, or we could say 10, and then 30. So n equaling 30. Our values are kind of switched now, n equaling 100. Let's see what happens there. It starts moving further and further away from us. And the scale kind of gets all crazy. But let's see what this says. So here, when n is equal to 10, we have this roughly normal shape. Whenever we start increasing, we have more and more values to the left and right. Oh, well, I see what happened here. Because we kept it off over here at 10, it's now growing with the rest of the graph. Yeah, no, it's not really growing with the rest of the graph. So the further and further we go out, the larger n is, the more normal it becomes. Let's see if that's what they say. So figure A is skewed right, figure B is slightly skewed right, figure C appears to be bell-shaped. So the more values that we have, the more normal our distribution ends up becoming. So again, more values is going to equate to something that looks more normal. And not normal as in the rest of these look abnormal. Normal saying that it has this bell-shaped curve that majority of our data is going to be centered right here in the middle. 
So between those two values, it gets centered right there in the middle. So we're able to predict more things about this data set than we can with other data sets. So the larger the number or the larger the sample size, the better data that you end up having. So for a fixed P, the number of trials N in a binomial experiment increases the probability distribution of the random variable X becomes bell-shaped. So as a rule of thumb, N times P times one minus P um, should be greater than or equal to 10. So the probability distribution will be approximately bell-shaped. So if we have these um, the, re the product of those three things being greater than or equal to 10, then the distribution is roughly bell-shaped. And here, according to, according to the CTIA, 72% of adult Americans would rather give up chocolate than their cell phones. In a simple random sample of 300 adult Americans, 230 indicated they would rather give up chocolate than their cell phones. Is this result unusual? So let's take a look at what they're saying. So 72% of adult Americans, so probability of success, 72%, so 0 0.72. Simple random sample of 300 adults. So N is equal to 300. Um, 230 indicated that they would rather give up chocolate than their cell phones. X is equal to 230. And let's see what these values are. Or what that probability is. So we have P, P is 0 0.72, N is 300, X is 230. So now what we're looking for is a probability of X equaling exactly 230. So this is equal to binomial distribution. Number of successes, we want 230. Number of trials, we have 300. Probability of success, 0 0.72. Cumulative, false, because we want to see exactly 230, see what that value is. So 0 0.101. Uh, it looks a little rare, but I'd say that it isn't that unusual. Let's see what they say. So from a previous example, we have the mean equaling 216 and the standard deviation being 7.8. So if we look at this distribution, um, so plus or minus 200. So they kind of took it a different route than what I'm taking it. So us looking at this value here, this value seems small, but we're looking at 300 different possibilities. So it's not that rare. What they're doing is they're counting on the z-score, which is, you're going to see these in the following chapters to come, but they're kind of taking that empirical rule approach. So since any value less than 200 or greater than 231 is unusual, 230 is not unusual. So they're kind of seeing it in a different way. Um, they used, um, go back to chapter two, chapter three, sorry. So chapter three, what they're using is the empirical rule. So empirical rule showed us a bell-shaped curve. And within one standard deviation, we have 68% of the data. Within two standard deviations, we have 95% of the data. And within three standard deviations, we have 99.7% of the data. And all they did is they went out two standard deviations. And they saw that 95% of the data would fall within those two standard deviations. So anything outside of that would be unusual. That's all they did here. So it doesn't really match why they kind of threw it in this section, but we're gonna see more of this in the next chapter. So that was the end of this section and actually end of this chapter. So if you guys have any questions, please let me know. But if not, um, good luck on your homework. I'll see you, see you guys next time. Bye.